Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 11 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. So before we get into attacking and interacting with objects in our game world, we need to talk a little bit about facing. And the way our character is facing is important for two reasons. The first being that things look more realistic if you're actually facing them before you attack them or you interact with them. And secondly, it actually makes our job a lot easier if we're in a situation where there are multiple things that could be interacted with or could be attacked, it makes it a lot easier for us to narrow down what specifically should be reacting. So in order to do this, we're going to need to kind of implement this sort of facing idea into our walking controller because that is a specific case where we've got this camera that's kind of static in the world and our facing will be relative to that camera as opposed to a situation where say the camera's just following us and we always know you know our facing is always kind of constant so let's jump into model develop and start building out this facing system so here in model develop we're inside of our walking controller class and i'm actually going to add some space before the class officially starts and i'm going to create an enum up here so i'm going to say public enum I'm going to call this facing direction, and I'm going to give it four values. It's going to have north, east, south, and west. Now inside of our walking controller, I'm going to add a new piece of movement information here, which is going to be a facing direction, and I'm just going to call that facing. Now, we need some way of checking when we need to actually change our facing, because it's not going to happen every single frame, hopefully. It's really only going to happen in certain situations, like when we start moving or when we change direction while we are moving. So in order to do that, we need some way to kind of be constantly looking and check and say, oh, this is a, this is a situation where our facing might change, so we can kind of go through a little check system and see if it actually happened. And so in order to do that, we're going to need to see if there are situations where our walk velocity has changed, because this is kind of keeping track of both if we're walking as well as our direction. So that's our best bet. And so in order to check if something has changed, we need a way to kind of look back to the previous frame and say, is this different from what we had been doing just previously? So what we're going to do is we're going to add another variable here. I'm going to say vector 3 previous walk velocity. And so that's just going to be a place where we're able to store the previous frame's data in terms of how we were walking. Were we walking forward, backward, to the sides, or not at all? Now in our read input here, at the start of every frame that we are putting an input, we are resetting the movement to zero is the first thing we're doing so that we can, you know, recalculate it from scratch each time. So we need to, right before that, we need to store that previous walking velocity. So right here, just I'm going to add a line in right before the reset move, and I'm going to say previous walking velocity equals walk velocity. Because at this, at this moment in time, walk velocity is still reflecting that previous frames just before we reset it. So that'll work perfectly there. We're also actually going to need to do that in our late update function, because down here we remember um, if we don't have a new input on a given frame, we're going to reset that movement as well. So right there, we're going to say previous walking velocity equals walking velocity. We could, in theory, put this inside of the reset movement method, but there might be situations where we're resetting and we don't want to actually put a previous velocity in there, so I'm going to keep it separate for now. So how we're going to check this is after we've either not put in an input, in which case this will happen and we'll reset this, or we have an input and it's happened inside of our read input method, after one of these two things has taken place, we can then check and see is our previous walking velocity different from our current walking velocity. So I'm going to say if prev walk velocity does not equal walk velocity, then we know 
that our velocity has changed at least. That doesn't necessarily mean our facing has changed, we might have been stopped and then started moving in the same direction we were still facing, but we know something has changed. So at this point here, we're gonna actually want to check, check if there is a face change. And then if there is, actually change the face. So in order to do that, we're gonna need a new method that can do that for us. And we're gonna put that down here. We're gonna say void, we're going to call this check for facing change. It's not going to take any arguments or any parameters. And we are going to put in this, however, we're going to put in a few cases here. There are three cases I can think of where our velocity is going to change. The first is when we are moving and then we suddenly stop. However, in that case, we're never going to need to change our facing because we, we're not putting in any new information. We're not turning or anything. We're just stopping moving. So in that situation, we can just return and get out of this, this method where you can say, you know, there's no, we don't need to do anything else. So we can put that one in first. We're going to say if our current walk velocity, which is a vector 3, is equal to vector 3.0, then we can simply return. We don't need to go any further. We're not, we're not moving, we're fine. Our facing is going to be good. The next option is if we are moving, but only on the x-axis or the y-axis, we're, you know, we're not moving diagonally. In those cases, we know that we're gonna want our facing to reflect whatever our movement is, which is pretty simple in that case, because yeah, we're just gonna be, if we're moving up, we're facing up. If we're moving down, we're facing down. So in those cases, I think we can just kind of However, we're going to do our facing change. We're actually going to change our facing. We can just put in our current velocity. So I'm going to say if walk velocity dot x equals zero, meaning in that case we're not moving on the horizontal, we're just moving vertically, or walk velocity dot z equals zero. So opposite, we're moving horizontally but not at all vertically. In those two cases we'll be able to just change our facing based on walk velocity. Now we don't have a we don't have a method or anything to do that yet. We're going to put that in in just a minute, but that's what we can do for now. Final option is what happens if we are moving in two directions at once? What if we're moving down and to the right, say? Should we tell it to face down? Should we tell it to face right? We don't exactly know. My take on it is, chances are if you're moving in a diagonal direction, you started moving in one direction, and then you chose at some point to change and like start, you know, you, you started off moving right, and then you decided, oh, there's something actually down and to the right, so I'm gonna add down to it. Or, you know, you started moving down, and oh, I'm gonna add right movement to that as well. Chances are, whatever that most recent movement you added is what's most important to you at that point. So we're going to change your facing based on what the most recent button you've hit is. How we're going to do that is we're going to say else. And now obviously there are situations where you're just going to hit both buttons at once, but I think this system will handle that equally well. So else, how are we going to know which is the most recent button you hit? Well, we'll be able to look back at that previous frame using our previous walk velocity and say, oh, you weren't hitting this button, so that's the newest button you've hit. So what we can say here is if previous walking velocity dot x equals zero, then in that case, we're going to change our facing. Well, actually, we still haven't created this method yet. So you know what? I'm going to I'm going to create the empty method at least for right now. Basically, how we're going to change the facing ultimately is we're going to pass in another vector 3. It might be the same one that we are currently using as our walk velocity, or it might be one that we're going to pare down a little bit, which I'll show you in just a second. But in either of those cases, it's going to give us a direction either up, right, left, or down. So we're going to be able to say void change facing. So at this point we're no longer checking, we're actually changing the facing. And we're going to pass in a vector 3, and I'm just going to call that dir for direction. 
So knowing that now, we can actually change this one up here that I was telling you about. Like I said, we're just because we know either x or z is zero, we can comfortably say we're just gonna pass this velocity in. So I'm gonna just say here, change facing. Actually, I'll keep that comment in there. Change facing. We're just gonna pass in walk velocity. So in this situation now, we know we have two, we have an x value and a z value, and now we're looking to see what's the most recent. So if the x was zero last frame, that means the x is now no longer zero, it's the most recent change. So we're going to call change facing, but we're just gonna give it the x value. So we're gonna say new vector three, and it's gonna have our current walk velocities, whoops, walk, velocities x value and then just 0 and 0. So it's a it's still a vector 3 but it's only got that pertinent x information in this case. Else if previous walk velocity dot z equals 0. So if z is the newest one then we're only going to want to pass in that z information so we can say change facing same idea here, new vector 3, but x will be 0, y will be 0, and then our z value will be walk velocity.z. Now the final possibility here is that somehow we've gotten to this, but neither x nor z is 0, or neither x nor z was 0 last time, in which case something kind of weird's going on. But we can still proceed. We can still pass in our walk velocity and the game will figure it out. So we can say else change facing walk velocity. And we'll just pass it in raw as it is because we're not unfortunately sure which was the most recent button hit. However, I am going to put in a quick debug.log warning. It's not going to stop our game or anything, but it is a kind of a weird situation. If this, if we get to this point in our code, something weird is going on. So I'm just going to say here, unexpected, um, unexpected walk velocity. Ugh, can't type today. Value. Just to let us know, something kind of weird has happened here. But we can still move forward. This will still work. We're, we're kind of bug proofing as we go a little bit here. So we're either passing in now a raw walk velocity or um, one of these kind of adjusted walk velocities so that we're only passing in hopefully one direction. In this case, we might be getting anything, but we'll deal with that. So I'm going to put a note here just to kind of mention that so that if we're ever creating other code that's going to pass into this, we can let it know that that's what we're ideally want looking for is either just an x or just a z value. So we're going to say something to the effect of um, note method assumes only x or z value will be non-zero in dir parameter. And we're going to we're going to default this, we'll default to z value. And what that basically means is that if we do end up having an x and a z, we're going to default just using the z value. He's, our character will either be looking up or down in those situations. And that's partly, I mean, you could have it be any direction you like, it just sometimes I find it makes more sense for our character to kind of default to looking at the camera, you know, so you can actually see him. But that's totally up to you. So how this is going to work is basically we're just going to check and see. We're passing in this vector 3, this direction. So first we'll see, is the direction does the direction have a z value? If so, we'll either be looking up or down. So we'll say if dir dot z does not equal 0, if it's not zeroed out, then we know that we're moving in an upward or downward direction, or we should be facing in an upward or downward direction. So we can quickly check and just say we can use a conditional statement and set our facing equal to 
And then we're going to ask a quick question here. We're going to say, is direction z greater than 0? If it is, we should be looking up. So we'll say, um, yeah. So if we are indeed looking up, facing should equal facing direction dot north. Otherwise, we're not looking up. We must be looking down. So it'll be facing direction dot south. If you're not familiar with uh, conditional statements, um, I recommend looking them up in the um, MSDN. It's probably the best place to look at them. They're pretty simple once you kind of once you get to know them, um, and they're really useful for this. Would otherwise be you know like four lines of code or something. Crams it down to one pretty nicely. So if z turns out to be zero, then we're presumably looking at our x value. So we're going to say else if direction x does not equal zero, then facing should equal. And we're going to basically do the same thing here. In fact, I'm going to copy all this. And we're just going to change the z to x right here. And if x is greater than 0, then we should be facing to the right, which is east. Otherwise, we'll be facing west. And that's basically all we need. At this point, we'll, we'll have officially changed our facing. And we can confirm this by, we'll put in a quick kind of confirm proper facing. And we'll say debug.log. And we'll just log our facing value after we've done all this. So if we jump back over to Unity, I'm going to go to the console. Uh, let's see here. Cannot complicitly, implicitly convert vector 3 to bool. Sounds like we've got a missing equal sign somewhere. Let me just double click this. Ah, here we go, yeah. Not setting it to zero, I want to check if it is zero. Save that. There we go, all clear on our errors. And we can hit play now. And what we'll see is when we start moving or we change direction, we'll get a log in the console here saying what direction we're moving in. So let's hit play. And I can move down, and we are still only showing our movement, which means I probably forgot to actually call this. Yes, yes, I did. Silly me. Right here, where we're checking if there's a face change, we're actually going to call the method check for facing change. And now this will start this whole system. So we now hit play. And if I hit south, now we see we're going south. West, we move west, north. You'll notice when we stop, it doesn't change because, as we said, if we've stopped moving, we can just exit out of this. We don't need to worry about changing our facing. East, all those work. We can even jump, and that will record. We've got that last west record. And you'll notice here, unlike our input um, system where we were checking every single frame and logging our movement, we're only logging when that change happens. So it's a much more kind of efficient system. In fact, I think we can jump, let's jump quickly to our input scripts. And I believe that was in input manager that we had. Yeah, we can actually get rid of this debug logging the movement because it's kind of going to start cluttering up our console. And now if we play, yeah, we see that this is a much cleaner movement. Now you'll notice they double up, um, like here we have east and south, there's like a new east and south, that's because I was moving um, diagonally, and that sends Unity down a slightly different path in our code. So that's why this east and this east are two different things. Um, but the system is working. Now obviously it's not really convenient for us to be looking at our console log every time we change direction and confirm which way we're moving, especially when we're gonna wanna start knowing Am I facing toward this object so that I can attack it or I can interact with it? So in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a visual cue onto our player that will automatically change for us whenever we change our facing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.